Um, what we got is two pictures of the same place on two different days. Um, what I want you to do, I'm, just, I'm literally just going to give you a couple of minutes, um, is to write either a sentence, a phrase, or a list of words. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to put this in the chat. And then in about two minutes, I'm going to um, say press enter, and then I'll just read off what's coming up. But what you want to think about is the mood and atmosphere. So what is the mood and atmosphere in picture one? What is the mood and atmosphere in picture two? So your two minutes start about now. Have a think. Think about uh, the best, best language that you can possibly use. Uh, so extending your language using um, uh, a really good vocabulary, kind of a golden vocabulary in a way. Um, and we will see what you come up with in one minute and 30 seconds. There we go, got the time again. Just give you one more minute because it's, there's only two pictures. Right, so in about 20 seconds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to hit enter, enter, uh, and I will have a look to see what people have said about the mood and the atmosphere. So make sure you've got something, uh, something typed in, in 10, 5, 4, Three, oh, two, go, hit Anna. hit Anna. Right, tranquil is a nice word. Uh, isolated, uh, bright, calm, destructive is a nice word. Uh, scary, calm, undisturbed and serene are nice words. Right, we've got one, two, three, four, five people have typed something in which one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, means that there are two people who have let, who have yet to type anything. So what I'll do is whilst those two people are typing in, I'll just um, show you, I'm gonna try and do this without closing everything down. Closing everything, here we go. Right, um, top tip, top tip. You should be able to see Google on the screen. Um, and one of the things that, uh, examiners i mean we're, we're always framing this towards the gcse um but um i think this is as much as an, of an exercise in trying to extend your vocabulary as best as you as best as possible uh one of the things that you can do so if i take uh so someone said uh calm so what i'll do is i'll just type calm and I'll write synonym because what this will do, you, you can bring up a thesaurus. I didn't want to bring up a thesaurus because it's kind of like full of ads. Um, but if I type in calm synonym into Google, straight away I've got words like tranquil or serene, uh, peaceful. Pacific is interesting. Um, and would I describe Pacific as calm? I don't know. So what I will do is click on it, see what it says. Peaceful in character or intent, a Pacific gesture. There you go. I didn't actually know that. Uh, so we'll go back. We've got undisturbed, restful. Balm is quite a nice word. And of course, you can click on these just to find out whether your uh, whether the definitions kind of fit your um, your your description. Um, characterized by pleasantly warm weather, the balmy uh, balmy days of late summer. So there we go. Balm is quite a nice word. Uh, halcyon. Uh, that is pronounced halcyon. Halcyon. Uh, a period of time in the past that was ideally ha ideal idyllically happy and peaceful so would halcyon fit i don't know how to see that so it's kind of like looking back a little bit so maybe that wouldn't fit so well uh but you know if i've got the word yeah well i've got the word calm 
uh, I can use these words, you know, restful, balmy, serene, peaceful. Uh, if I've got the word bright, here we go, scintillating, glittering, sparkling, gleaming, glowing, intense, beaming, dazzling, vivid, brilliant, shining. Okay, so these words are just that little, that step away from bright. So when you, when you kind of, um, at this particular stage, what you'll be doing is, is planning things. And that's a little bit what we're going to be doing shortly. Um, but that's uh, a little top tip, really, is, uh, you know, if, if you're planning stuff, you've got your laptop with you or your phone with you, uh, just turn on a thesaurus or just go to Google uh, and type stuff in. You know, use the word synonym and straight away it will give you adjectives uh, or adverbs to do with that word and you know using the word scintillating or using the word uh beaming dazzling da uh, blazing vivid is uh just that one step away from bright i think the way to think about it is that okay your examiner is going to be kind of sat like this where they've got a screen in front of them they're going to be reading um reading uh the uh, descriptive stuff on the screen and every time they come to a word that perhaps they that perhaps is kind of like more of a common usage word uh, they'll just sit there and they'll just maybe just sigh a little bit like oh, read that 20 times tonight um, but if you then come across a word like scintillating uh, you kind of your ears prick up a bit your eyes kind of oh that's a different word and it stands out and the more that you stand out the more the examiner will be kind of comparing you to everyone else and saying do you know what that's that's a good word and they will look at you in a more positive way uh, than they would perhaps other people right so we're, we're going back to google in a bit um let's move on here right descriptive language uh english writing um so okie dokie yeah well, Go back to this very, very quickly. Uh, you know, scintillating, uh, tranquil, uh, serene. Serene was a really nice word that came up. Uh, this scary, but then if we looked at destructive, we might have words like menacing. Um, and we, we just extend our uh, description of the scene just that little bit more. Right, okay, so the reason we're doing this is uh, what we're going to prepare for today is to write a description of the same place in two different times. You wouldn't get that in a GCSE, um, but what it's going to do is, uh, if you write about contrasting things, because uh, quite often the, the scenes that they will give you could possibly include the weather, you know, because what you're talking about is the setting. Uh, if you've got um, those kind of extremes, um, then you're going to have a bank of words in your head that you'll be able to use. Uh, it's important to remember that this is worth um, it is worth 25% of the GCSE. It is a quarter of the GCSE. Uh, so uh, just you know, extending your language, uh, standing out is going to help you. Um, when you're planning descriptive writing, it is important that you choose language that suits the mood or the atmosphere that you're trying to uh, create. And um, uh, that second bottom one, remember you can borrow language from other texts that you've read uh, and have in mind the language uh, like the prelude from the storm on the island. Um, I know that I read, uh, someone wrote something once, it was a couple of years ago, uh, and the phrase they, they were writing about the weather and the phrase they used was the uh, the merciless iced east winds that knived them. Okay, you know, and that's, that's taken straight from uh, exposure, the poem exposure, but that's acceptable, that's fine. Um, what you don't want to be doing is is kind of just copying uh, a story uh, that someone else has written. Um, some so I have seen students get away with that, but it's a very, very, very dangerous thing to do. Uh, I know I marked a, a piece of work once uh, and it started off uh, was with uh, uh, Sean woke up and there were zombies outside and this person rewrote the entire story of Shaun of the Dead in about a side and a half. There was no description in there and I just, I, I couldn't really give it that much in the way of marks because the story had been stolen. But stealing elements from different stories is absolutely acceptable. If Shakespeare did it, then we can do it. Um, that bottom bit in, uh, in bold, one way to think about this uh, 
is that should be is not us is how to describe the image to someone who can't see it so if you were describing this scene you know maybe you uh were on the phone or sending an email or texting uh and you were texting i don't know a relative a friend and you were trying to describe the scene you know how do you describe the scene so that it it, it becomes they they can they can visualize it they can picture it uh, you know, if if you were just to say, "Oh, there's a lighthouse and it's blue," well, what's blue? The lighthouse is blue. The sky is blue. The sea's blue. It's S C. I don't know if there's a lighthouse. I assume there's sea about. If there's a lighthouse, I assume there's rocks about. But I don't know because you've not described it. So you need to kind of imagine that. Uh, imagine that. Yeah, imagine you're describing it to somebody, and that and, and they really need to visualize it. Right, okie dokie. So what we're going to do is, uh, and this is kind of uh, the, we're going to be doing this for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and that's literally all we're going to be doing today. Then I'm going to be sending you on your way, uh, letting you have a go at, uh, you know, being descriptive. Uh, and that will uh, focus for the lessons next week. If you've drawn the image, you know, um, and it's a particularly good image, you, but you will have this in front of you, obviously. But if you've drawn the image, uh, label it. So you need to label it. With, if you've not drawn it, just use use these as subheadings. Uh, what you're going to need to do is to refer to, and I'll, I'll talk for about a minute so that you can do that. Okay, so do it as I'm talking. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to describe the sky, okay, and those clouds in the sky. Uh, we are probably going to describe the sea as well. What we probably we, we want to describe is a lighthouse. Uh, we're going to want to describe the cliff edge and we're going to want to describe the rocks. So what I'm doing is, and, and this is a top tip really for when you are sat in your GCSE and you turn to question five, paper one, and there's an image and you think, oh God, I don't know. Imagine that you are standing where you are standing. You could even go for, imagine that you're going for a walk. Um, what you're doing is you're describing the scene um, in the best language that you can. You're not writing a story about it. You can go for a walk and say what you see, hear, what you smell, what you touch. So focusing on the different senses, certainly the different senses, uh, not just what you can see, but what you can hear. And, you know, you can make that up. This is a very, very calm day. So you can make that up. That's not a problem. Uh, but dr uh, draw boxes around the bits that you think that uh, would be useful to describe. And in all honesty, you have got time to do this in the exam. Uh, you've got 45, 50 minutes, unless you are running miles and miles behind. If you're running miles and miles behind, uh, then I will get on with the writing. But if you've got the 50 minutes, uh, there is nothing wrong with spending 10 minutes um, and you know, be you, you, you got to be quite um, firm about firm to yourself. Okay, saying so, right, I've got ten minutes. Look at the clock. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to uh, describe this, 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 and you annotate the picture on the exam paper. Um, so, um, and the, the the people who I have seen get the highest marks have done that. Uh, found four or five things on the paper that they're going to describe, and they've just written words or phrases. Uh, down around the exam paper and that that kind of like gives you a structure to write for so we're going to sky cliff edge lighthouse sea and rocks uh, for this one it's going to be exactly the same okay it's the same picture it's just there are different uh different interpretations of that because of the, because of the weather so again really really quickly while i talk um you're either going to want those subheadings so sky lighthouse cliff edge rocks C, or you just want to draw a box or a circle if your drawing is good. If your drawing isn't good, like mine wouldn't be, um, you can just write the subheadings in. Uh, I will give you 30 seconds. I'm going to cough massively, even though I've not got COVID, I promise that. <coughs> and um, what we will do is we will just focus on the planning of descriptive writing. So we're going to look at the language today. Uh, and what you need to do is to write down as many ideas as you can in this lesson. You will be sharing ideas with others. I will be giving you ideas. You're going to be typing things in. Uh, I can uh, talk those to, uh, you know, read those out. Um, 
as we plan, we're going to alternate between the pictures so that we can make clear contrasts. We're only really, um, I mean, we could go through the whole thing, but we'll, we'll be here for ages and you'll probably get a bit sleepy towards the end of it. So we're only going to go for the, the first two ideas. I think we're going to look at the sky and the sea. Um, and then I'm going to let you go away and uh, work out your own for the cliff edges, etc. Uh, obviously, though, when you write your descriptions, what you're going to be doing is write about them in separate paragraphs. Um, so at the end of the lesson, um, it's well, you show me the notes. You can either flip the webcam on and hold it in front so I can't see anything else, take the picture, send it on, show my homework. I don't mind. Um, what we're going to be doing is preparing the following language features. Uh, we're going to be looking for adjectives. Um, everyone's writing should be a wash of adjectives. Uh, verbs, so extending your vocab, having the best verbs that you've got. Uh, adverbs, obviously you've got a verb, chances are you probably have in descriptive writing an adverb to go with it. So a word that describes the verb. Uh, similes, it's always useful to have similes. Uh, remember, best similes that you can find, not boring similes. Uh, metaphors, if you can. Uh, personification is always a very um, uh, a, a good technique to use. I can remember, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think I've shown you this yet, I may have shown it to you. Uh, there was a description of a sea scene, uh, so it's like a beach and it, it, it was some, uh, the person who was describing it uh, talked about the sea lapping gently around a child's knees. As, as they paddled gently through the clear, clear blue waters, um, and the the sea lapping against a child's knees uh, was the thing that got it. I, it was like it was a really, really boring piece of piece of writing, but that was a lovely image, and they actually elevated the mark because of that image alone. Uh, so having uh, personification in there, I think, is kind of an, uh, necessary. And you know, if you're writing about something that's um, something that's kind of glorious, something that's dark, then you will have that semantic field of words. So maybe a semantic field of positivity or semantic field of threatening or menacing. Uh, but do remember you can borrow language from the poems that you've studied. So if we bring, um, we got these two images, okay, we got like uh, an island, which is uh, the weather is really bad. That should remind us of storm on the island. Um, or we've got the, uh, the the kind of really calm, uh, serene image that um, Wordsworth was painting in or painting or describing in The Prelude. So just very quickly, have a look at these two poems. Um, type in a word or phrase from either of these poems or from both. So you can have uh, a word or phrase from the prelude for either image. I don't mind which one you do, but what I want is a word or a phrase uh, that you can use to describe the, uh, the peaceful, the calm, the bright blue sea, or a word or a phrase that you could use to describe the storm scene. Okay, from either of these poems. So in about one minute's time, I'm going to say press enter. Uh, we are going to see uh, a number of, uh, we are going to see a number of uh, boxes tick up uh, and we'll see what you've got. So about 40 seconds. Now we've got about 20, get ready to hit enter in 10, five, four, three, two, one. Right, hit enter, let's see what you got. Right, there we go, brilliant. Tragic chorus in a gale exploding. Uh, there are no trees, no natural shelter. Pummels is a great word. Pummels is a brilliant word. It's, it's such a nice word, uh, boxing word. Uh, huge and mighty forms is good. Exploding comfortably down the cliffs. Spits like a tame cat. Love that image, spits like a tame cat. That's a, that is a very clever image. Exploding comfortably is a very clever, clever image as well. Uh, what I've done is I've kind of, um, you don't have to copy these down uh, or do anything with them, uh, but just um, 
the majority of, of you got these and it's very easy to spot the uh the, the kind of the bad weather um the green the suitable language for Im image one we have got okay it's not glittering idle in the moon but in the moon but you know it's in the sunlight under the blue sky you have these small circles glittering uh, you can talk about the sparkling light you can talk about the silent water because the sea isn't rough uh whereas uh suitable for picture two we've got a craggy ridge grim shape uh hunger darkness their hunger darkness and that's a really nice way of describing those clouds um tragic chorus in the gale there we go uh, pummels exploding comfortably uh the flung spray hits is a nice image uh spits like a tame cat is fantastic uh and of course we've got that semantic field the wind dives and strafes invisibly so describing the wind we can't see the wind but it's it's worth describing so you can see straight away there's there's quite a lot of stuff you could you could steal borrow from these two poems um you know and if you know your poems well um there's no harm in doing that at all so yeah nice imagery chosen so what we're going to do is we're going to think about the mood that we're trying to create with this so um for each of the the, the kind of like five sections that we've chosen for each of the pictures uh, what we need to do is to think of an adjective that describes it um verbs for you know for, for the clouds for the, for the uh, plain lines uh adverbs that we could use to describe those verbs uh maybe a uh, a simile or a metaphor um and uh maybe some personification uh, what i want uh, what i want to show you really quickly is where is it it's here okay i'm gonna put this up on show my homework this is something that miss miller made uh ages ago and this is colors okay colors and words that you can describe words that you can use to describe colors so here here we've got all of the words that can be used uh, to describe uh, yellow and she's matched the kind of shade so the dijon is a dark yellow uh, can, uh, uh canary is a well canary should be a little bit more brighter than that but gold is golden daffodil is quite a uh, quite a, a a light color uh for reds uh, or pink you know we've got pink rose fuchsia coral uh crepe is an interesting one don't know about crepe magenta green is right and when you're looking at these words if you don't understand the word um look it up and see whether it's uh, appropriate because we've got to think about the appropriateness of the word so for example if i was back in my courting days if i'd taken a girl out um as, as as a younger person okay and i was trying to impress this particular girl and this girl had green eyes uh i might gaze into her eyes lovingly and say oh your eyes are like um just to try and impress her um now if i sit there and go and say oh your eyes are like sea foam or your eyes are like seaweed okay it's not going to really work very well she's not going to be over like impressed if i say your eyes are pistachio or uh, your eyes are crocodile or your eyes are basil um you know those are not really or your eyes are pickle your eyes are pickle green that's not really going to um impress her that much if i tell her about her emerald eyes you know emerald is emerald is a uh, a um precious stone okay it's saying something about her if i say about your chartreuse eyes you know um chartreuse is, is like an alcohol that you can that you can lap up and sink into okay so you know that that's a very very pleasant image if i say you've got moss eyes okay that's that's pretty negative um so i will put these on show my homework but like purple uh mauve violet boysenberry uh, amethyst we got the browns hickory caramel umber is a fab word uh, the reds are different reds uh, what i'll go down to is the blues very very quickly so the sky is blue you know an adjective to describe the sky is blue um slate is not a great word that's not a very deep blue sky is the sky the sky sky that'd be rubbish the navy sky navy is too dark um but if i look at a word like cobalt okay that's again that's kind of uh, like precious um lapis is interesting lapis is a stone and it's a very um vivid uh kind of almost like an electric blue um is it appropriate to call a sea describe the sea with the color of a stone 
Uh, possibly not. And possibly if I was going out with a girl who had uh, a blue eyes and I just look, oh, you've got lapis eyes. It's like, you know, you've got eyes like stone. It's probably, again, not a particularly appropriate thing to say. Um, cerulean is a really nice word for sky. Um, so if you were talking about the cerulean sky, for example, or the azure sky or the cobalt sky, OK, as a marker, someone marking this, um, there, there are quite possibly markers who've never seen the word cerulean who will go, cerulean, what does that mean? And they will look it up and, oh, wow, it's like a, a, a really bright blue. What a great word. And they will really mark you up on uh, the language that you've used. So there we go. This is, I'll, I'll put this up on show my homework. Uh, this is the sort of thing that you can keep. It's, it's almost like a little dictionary of uh, colour synonyms. Um, but this is this is what I want you to do. OK, what I want you to do is to just have a, a, a quick go at this um, and we'll see how much you've done. What's the time? It's 12.04. We don't want to go for many more than five, five, ten minutes tops. So uh, we'll see what adjectives can you find to describe it? Uh, what verbs could you use to describe the plane lines? Actually, I'll do this first one for you. OK, because I have had a look. So the adjectives to describe the sky, you know, cerulean, azure, sapphire. OK, you're talking about the cerulean sky, um, the, the sapphire sky is it's, uh, rich. Uh, verbs to describe the plane lines. Well, I was thinking, you know, these are clouds. Uh, so it's light. They are floating. So and, and literally just before the lesson, uh, all I did was bring up uh bring up this and i i clicked in float with yo but i typed in float uh and then we've got words like drift glide uh levitate waft is a nice word flow is a nice word so verbs for the lines uh these are things that are kind of like drifting gently on the breeze or wafting silently across the sky or sliding across the sky maybe gliding gliding gently across the sky so you know think of a word that would describe how these uh these clouds and then just look for synonyms and use those um adverbs to describe it well this is a very, very gentle scene. These are going to be moving very, very slowly. Slowly is OK, but it's, you know, let's think of uh, if something is floating or wafting or drifting, it would perhaps be driftingly aimlessly, almost as if it's got nowhere, nowhere certain that it wants to go. So drifting aimlessly. Uh, simile or met metaphor, I was thinking, OK, what we got is this kind of like cross, cross. It's almost like a uh, kind of maybe a tapestry or a pa patchwork. And, and if we put things to cross, we can call it as a, a like a lattice. Um, now, it's almost like cotton wool, but I don't want to use the word cotton wool. Loads of people use the word cotton wool. But I did say like a, uh, a cotton lattice patchwork. OK, so I would describe it like a cotton lattice patchwork. It's just a nice simile uh, to describe the shape of it. Now, personification, uh, I want to personify the sky. So um, uh, I think it's got to be a happy sky. Um, I can't see a sun, but we'll, we'll talk about the sky. Um, and uh, so if we're talking about sky, we needed adjectives. So I'm going to have the cerulean sky. Um, maybe the cerulean sky beams from behind the clouds. Maybe the cerulean sky peeps from behind the cotton lattice patchwork. OK, so saying that the, the sky beams because this is a happy image uh, you know it beams or it peers or, or it smiles from behind the uh, from from those clouds it gives you a very 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 pleasant image so that's the negative side um, what I'm going to ask you to do is so there are five things I'll give you about three, three seven minutes past I'll give you about three minutes see what you can come up with for the sky in the darkened picture. Okay, uh, so adjectives to describe, verbs, adverbs, simile, metaphor, or personification, uh, and we'll see how yours uh, contend with mine. So actually, I'll tell you what, what we will do, I'll give you about 40 seconds, and we'll just do adjectives, then we'll do verbs, then adverbs, then simile, 
metaphor, then personification. Then we'll do the C and then we'll move on. Um, so 40 seconds, adjectives, put them in your, uh, put them in the um, typey box. Uh, 40 seconds, go. Ten seconds. Okay, so adjectives. Hit, hit enter. Let's see what you got. Mysterious, raging. That's really nice. Raging. Raging is a really nice word. Uh, mystic. That's an interesting phrase. Uh, mystic. Um, it's it's almost like otherworldly otherworldly ethereal in a way ethereal is a nice word as well just made that up i'm not made it up that's the real word but i just thought of it uh intimidating something that is perhaps uh something that is is scary dimmed dark threatening okie dokie so we've got a number of adjectives uh right what we want to do is to think about verbs okay think about verbs what verbs could we use to describe the clouds and we will do that in 40 seconds starting from now oops Right, hit enter, let's see what you got. Verbs to describe this dark, rumbling, overwhelming. Flood is quite, that's an interesting phrase actually. Overwhelming is a nice word. What else have we got? Blemished sky. Blemish is more of a, more of an adjective. It's a nice adjective though, it kind of works. Um, I've got, um, you could use threatening again. Threatening can be a verb. It can be an adjective. Um, I got forbidding. Uh, that was my favourite one. Uh, it's a forbidding sky. Uh, it's kind of uh, very, very ominous. Uh, so uh, an ominous uh, sky that has a forbidding air. Um, what about adverbs? If we were to describe overwhelming or rumbling or intimidating or forbidding or threatening, what adverbs would we use? An adverb. Adverb will is it's something that describes a verb. So um, if you've got the sky rumbling, uh, then think about how it would be rumbling. Could be rumbling loudly. Could be rumbling quietly. Could be rumbling ominously. Uh, could be rumbling threateningly. So that L Y word uh, describing the describing what the clouds are doing. So describing the verb. Right, let's see what you come up with. What we got? 
What adverbs have you got? Hit enter. Type it in really quick. Hit enter. Yeah, powerfully. There you go. Powerfully threatening. It's, it's quite a scary image. It's something that's powerfully threatening. It's quite a scary image. What else have we got? We got Wills. Who else has got an adverb for me? Mystically. Oh, excruciatingly. That's nice. Mystically is a fab word. Uh, mystically ethereal. Uh, ethereal. Yeah, that's that's a really nice image. Um, excruciatingly powerful. Uh, so almost painfully powerful. Uh, I put menacingly, uh, something that's uh, menacingly intimidating. Strenuously. Yeah, strenuously. It's kind of like strong. It's almost straining to attack. Now, similes and metaphors and personification are just that little bit more difficult. Um, I think it takes a little bit of time to think about these. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, I was looking at these clouds and I was thinking, well, how do they, they're rolling. Uh, they're rolling in and how are they rolling in? And, and I said, you know, it's like rolling in like a volcanic explosion, maybe. Um, I think the similes do take, I don't want to do that in 40 seconds. I think it's it's quite difficult to think about something so quickly, but maybe something like rolling in like a volcanic explosion um, would kind of work. Um, if we talked about uh, personification, I was, I, I actually, I, I stared at this for a little while when I was thinking about personification. And I was thinking this is almost like cigarette smoke that's being blown by God into your face. So um, it's like the, uh, uh, smoke being uh, blown, you know, think of those kind of like gangster film, films where uh, someone takes a drag of the cigarette and then blows it, blows the smoke threatening in someone's face to uh, kind of appear intimidating. So, um, and I, I talked about the, um, the dark, the, the dark rolling smoke uh, blown by a menacing God. Okay, um, so whatever forms of personification that we can think of, we will do one more only. Uh, and then we will talk very, very quickly about what you've got to do. Uh, let's have a look at the C. OK, what adjectives are, again, 40 seconds, what adjectives to describe the C? Okay, hit enter, whatever you've got. What's your best adjective to describe the C? Tamed, there we go. So using the image from the poem, okay, uh, this, this C is tamed because it is so still. Okay, peaceful, yeah, peaceful, it will, peaceful works. I'm liking tamed, that, that kind of like image. Something wild that it's, it's calm tamed it has that ability something that's tame it does have, have that ability to be um to be violent okay we could be talking about glitter or well, glittering the sea glittering although the sea glittering is more of a verb there you go i've given you a verb um don't use glittering i want you to think about verbs that would describe the sea how this C? Oh, and don't forget with the adjectives you can use you can use the um, the colour ones. So cobalt, cerulean, azure. Uh, if you've used cerulean for the sky, don't use cerulean for the sea. Use a different one. So you could have the uh, cerulean sky uh, beaming down at the uh, cobalt sea that is winking back. There we go. We've got some nice personification there as well. <laughs> So think about what verbs could you use? And if, if you've got a verb, can you stick an adverb on it as well? So verb and adverb. So as soon as you're ready, stick it in the box, hit enter, we'll see what you got. Right, bouncing, trickling, gliding. Interesting floating, bouncing with jubilation. That's a really nice image. That the, the 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 idea of the sea sea bouncing, rather than kind of uh, 
rather than kind of like pulsating. It's, it bounces more of a, a, a nice thing. So I've got calm and gently, and I think calm and gently, those are the kinds of phrases that if I wanted to expand a little bit, where's that gone, where's that gone, where's that gone? If I wanted to expand a little bit, um, I would be using, I would be using my thesaurus. A calm, tranquil, serene. So tranquil, serene, uh, gentle. So is there a good word for gently? Oops, can't spell it. Gently. Gently. I don't want to look at that. Let's look at gentle. Gentle. Um, mercifully mm, sympathetically actually sympathetically is quite a nice idea nice idea because it's suggesting that actually it could be really really rough at the same time so kind of um tranquilly sympathetic kindly shimmering kindly glittering kindly trickling kindly those are nice phrases that you could use OK, so making sure that, you know, you make make use of, you know, the Internet's there to help us uh, use it. Um, we will finish off with, can anyone think of either a really good simile metaphor or a really good piece of personification to describe how calm the sea is? Again, I'll give you 40 seconds. Um, how can you describe? I've not thought of this. I'll have a think as well. Right, what we got? Similes or personification? Go for it. And this is this is quite tough. This is quite a tough tough ask. Uh, but the more we practice it, uh, the more it will become second nature. Flat as a pancake. You know, for, I, I like the uh, flat as a pancake is 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 fine. Um, you know, it's, it's an okay simile. Um, but it's, it's quite a common simile. So the waves lapping mer merrily in a joyous reunion, okay, is a really nice piece of personification. As steady as a stable horse is really quite interesting, okay, um, because we know that a horse can be violent. Um, and can actually be quite fierce. Um, I think, do you know what, if I was contrasting the two, you know, you would probably uh, describe the, you could, you could easily describe the rough sea as kind of a, um, um, a terrified stallion or a, a vicious stallion. Um, could we really describe it as a, I think you would have to, if you were talking about it in terms of a horse, you'd have to use it in the same context. So uh, in comparison to yesterday's uh, yesterday's uh, violent uh, sea with the violent stallion waves, today was like a, today, today the, the sea was as docile as a shire horse. Okay, so drawing the two comparisons together, uh, I think if you just said the sea is like a horse, it wouldn't be that clear, but if you're comparing it to 
how the sea was violent the day before, um, you know, that actually would be a very, very, very effective um, thing to do. So very, very shortly, this PowerPoint is going up on Show My Homework. Um, and this is what I would suggest you do. I would, su I would suggest you spend a bit of time uh, having a go through uh, and looking at how you describe the rough sea, uh, the rocks, uh, the rocks in the rough sea, uh, and the lighthouse, particularly with the personification, you know, so uh, there may be the lighthouse is kind of like uh, uh, proudly guarding, uh, whereas here, um it, it might be um suffering maybe a little bit under the for kind of like warily guarding with the kind of like ominous oncoming clouds you have the cliff edge okay that actually looks like a gentle and so, somewhere where you could go for a gentle stroll with the strout the flowers dancing uh dancing around um whereas here um it looks jagged sharp ominous Okay, so think of those words that you could use to describe those. Right, so what we're going to do next week uh, is you are going to have two lessons to write a description of the same place at two different times. Uh, you're going to use the, the, the phrases, vocab that we've used today. Um, you can use words, phrases from the poetry. Uh, you're going to write two different sections, one for each picture. You're not going to be writing loads and loads, okay? It's, you're not going to be writing like five paragraphs for one or five paragraphs for another it's, that's too much um but you know we'll give you an idea uh, of the amount but it's not going to be lots and lots and lots and lots try to use that range of poetic devices so the similes and metaphors and personification uh alliteration etc uh, plosives maybe if you're uh, describing something that's kind of like quite violent uh make sure you use a, a range now this these final two uh, are ones that i know that i've focused on before um but make sure you try and use these now the golden sentences um the fronted of verbial uh, sentence um the simile starter sentence um so uh, simile starter sentence uh, where's my writing where's my writing you know like so starting like a cotton uh, lattice patchwork uh the the clouds uh, uh wafted um aimlessly or amiably across the cerulean sky uh i've used a simile starter sentence uh i've used an adverb i've used a good verb and i've used an adjective all together okay but not only that because it's like an angry dog being seized and wave lashed upon the beach because you've got that comma in there uh between the simile uh, and the, uh, the the rest of the sentence, I've got a um, a complex sentence, um, and what that does is it gives you the opportunity. It forces you to use a range of set punctuation and sentence types. So you need to be trying to think about you know uh, far in the distance, far in the distance um, through the um, oh, far in the distance. Uh, far in the distance uh on the on the small pebble the lighthouse uh stands imperiously guarding uh guarding uh ships from the uh the dangerous coast for example uh, i've got a pre prepositional phrase there um so having a look at these golden sentences uh, so if we have the state and repeat obviously you're using the colons if you've got the two simile sentence obviously you're using the colons so that when you do your piece of writing okay make sure that it's make sure that you it's kind of a wash with description but have a go at adding probably at least two golden sentences within the writing um because it will it will just it will make it very easy for the person marking it to say, do you know what, that should be in the top band or that should be in the second top band because of the range of punctuation there. So what I'll do is I'll put this on show my homework straight away and I'll put it 